Saturday Sensation. I'm your host, Dan. And on this episode, I am going to be taking a look at Toshin Books, um, The History of EC Comics by Grant Geisman. Um, it's from 1933 to 1956. Toshin Complete Cover Gallery is how part of what this was being sold on. And we'll get to that in a bit. I took off this, uh, the cover, because it was getting a little messed up. I have so many markers for things I want to show off <laughs> that uh, it's warping the, making the book a little out of shape. So I don't want to, I'm going to hop right into this. So you can see it's the usual Toshin way oversized um, uh, copy of the book. Uh, you know, I meant to grab, let me grab this other, uh, book here for some comparison. Here is um, one of those black and white hardcover reprints of uh, EC stuff. You can kind of see this was already oversized. Uh, this is one of those uh, Dark Horse reprints, the EC archives. Um, so uh, you see how how large this thing is. We'll get back to that little book in a bit. Um, so it's huge. Real nice binding on it. It feels, it creaks. There, It's like almost 600 of these oversized pages. So it's heavy as hell. It needs to be read on a table. I'm shooting this while it's on the floor because I couldn't get it, uh, my uh, iPad up high enough on the table to take a picture of this. Um, so we get in here, it's, the book is broken down into these chapters. The, um, the MC Gaines era, 1933 to 1947. So that is Bill Gaines' father who started off this company. And this is his original, it, it covers his original, uh, comics that were supposedly educational or there were, they were Bible stories and stuff like that. We'll see that as it goes through. Then there's uh, 1947 to 1950, Bill Gaines in charge. So you see him start to bring in the types of comics that he's interested in. Um, uh, there's, a, there's a few comics, like there's Westerns and stuff that, that aren't what we think of as being EC, but which were very popular with other publishers at the time. So he starts off kind of trying to find their place uh on the newsstand, aping other publishers and what was popular before it goes to, this is what they call the new trend, 1950 to 54. And that is the horror comics, the war comics, the crime comics, um, mad and panic. And then it ends on seducing the innocent. So of course, that's when the comics code is coming in and pretty much is signing the death um, sentence for uh, for EC. Then there's they cover a couple of the comics that they try in this chap chapter four. It's a new direction, fifty five to fifty six. It's when they're trying to find something else that'll work, um, and not not making much of a go of it. And then um, the final chapter is one of the things that made me want to get this book is. EC's complete covers from 1942 to 1956. There's nothing I like better. I, I, I have whole books that are nothing but covers for things. I love uh, the way people sold comics and stuff. And I really, um, this is kind of a mixed bag when it gets to that, but we'll, we'll get to that. Um, it's not exactly what I wanted from it, but we'll see, we'll see as we get to that. Uh, again, this is 600 pages and every page is pretty much worth looking at. I'm not going to do that. Um, so I, I've highlighted a few pages. And here we go. Um, the first chapter here, um, they cover the history, the early history of comics. And I thought I'd, I, I'd show off this cover. Not EC, obviously. This is a DC publication. And um, it is uh, Wonder Woman. I love these early this artwork for the early Wonder Women woman um, books. Um, I think it's terrific. I think it's weird, you know, kind of weird and fun. And uh, I really, 
enjoy that. Um, I, they also show this, um, let me see here. Uh, they show uh, this um, book here, How You Can Defend Your Home. Um, by Max, it was published by Max Gaines. So I'll tie in there. And uh, I actually have a copy of that that uh, my father-in-law had uh, kept. He kept that from when he was a kid. And it's how to identify the planes that are attacking you in an air raid. <laughs> and different things you can do. And um, so that's a, that's a pretty cool little item there. Just thought I'd point that out. Uh, and here's another DC one. Um, they were the biggie at the time. Uh, I, I, when I was looking at this page, and I noticed how big the Flash's head is. I mean, look at how huge his head is in that compared to everyone else. It's pretty, pretty crazy. Um, pretty fun looking. Uh, just all kinds of, of stuff from the time period. I mean, it's just amazing how much they've got here. How they... Uh, Printed comics, an article from the time period. Uh, so now we get to um, to the actual stuff that uh, EC was originally putting out. Funny animal comics and stories from the Bible are some of the earliest things. And there's picture stories from world history. So see, ed, you know, EC, an educational comic. <laughs> Um, and, and this is what really stands out here because this, they have got a lot of original artwork at this giant size. Now, um, there, uh, Dark Horse had put out one of those artist editions, um, of, uh, the best of EC covers, uh, in this in that large size format they do and I couldn't afford it at the time and it sold out and it's pretty expensive I was helping I was hoping because it had sold out so fast that they would reprint that one but they're not they're instead they're doing one of those smaller paperback versions which you know quite frankly I can only have so many of these giant oversized things on my shelf or in my storage I mean it's, it, they, they just they take up so much room but at the same time, I love seeing them. <laughs> um, so I'm not going to sh obviously show every page. Uh, I just thought I'd point out uh, how whimsical a look this Tiny Tots comic is. Your first comic book. <laughs> and look, an elf eating an ice cream cone, a, a pink pony flying with giant Dumbo-like ears. Um, uh, a, a kind of stereotypical little kid's... Uh, Many stereotypes, like a little Asian boy flying a kite and a little uh, kid, I guess, from Mexico or something. Um, and there's, they even have some of this original artwork there. That looks like, in black and white, that actually looks pretty cool. <laughs> I like this too, Firefly. The Human Torch was already out over at Atlas, uh, or timely, I, I mean, it was timely at the time. Um, but that looks that definitely looks like like him there. Um, now this this character uh, was something that was come up to teach kids about electricity. Uh, I don't think it um, ready kilowatt. Uh, I think yeah, Walter Lance Productions. So they're EC's publishing a comic, but Walter Lance, the cartoon studio, actually created that character. And here's one. Um, now, EC only published the first issue of the Blackstone, that magician detective fights crime. Um, but I, <laughs> I'm enjoying, I like this. You know, it's one of those things where they take a, a real life person and put them in some pretty, uh, pretty crazy things. Here's the actual, this is the cover, but here's the splash page for the story. Um, with a thousand pound weights. Uh, I don't know if it's supposed to be falling or what. A gorilla coming out of a sewer tunnel, it looks like. And then there's this creature. It looks like an octopus here. This looks an awful lot like the little monsters from, I think it was the 80s horror movie called The Boogans. Um, <laughs> that's what that reminds me of. 
pretty fun looking stuff. Um, Moon Girl, it was kind of like um, their superhero comic. And uh, there's some... Oh, and uh, <laughs> this is uh, Feldstein. And uh, I just thought I'd point this out. This original cover here. He could draw the ladies, that's for sure. Um, oh, and here's a here's a an unpublished story. And uh, I thought this um, <laughs> this first panel, this first uh, the splash page here, um, made me think of uh, the Rocketeer, and when he bursts in on his girlfriend being. Uh, photographed, only in, of course, in a lot less uh, clothing. Um, here's some of the crime comics. I fight crime. Not, not a bad cover there. Uh, some of the western, one of the westerns, uh, Gunfighter. The Savage Strong Boy. <laughs> uh, there's tons. I'm not, I'm not showing off all the pictures. It's so many pictures survive of these guys and the artists and the, the editors and everything for EC much more so than the other publishers at the time um, and that was because of the way uh, Gaines ran the uh, the company um, oh and I, I love this uh, Ghastly Graham Ingalls drawing a pretty good looking young woman there there's uh, this is the, the color test. There's the actual cover. But this black and white looks pretty cool. I kind of got a thing for uh, ladies in fancy cowgirl outfits. Um, so that's pretty nice. Um, here's something from one of their romance comics. And I like this. This is uh, more Moon Girl and the uh, the horror element is becoming slightly more pronounced. Look, that's a pretty cool cover. Look at these gators. They're, they're a little wonky looking. They're not very... <laughs> but but still, pretty cool. Um, this is some nice... I like this uh, time period of the Feldstein where this where he's got this uh, heavy black ink line around these kind of cartoony features. It kind of reminds me a bit of the Basil Wolverton stuff, and I really like that. And uh, there's a, some more ghastly. Look at that. <laughs> um, just a cool cover. So we're into, obviously, the, the horror comics and stuff. And uh, this, this is covered so much in, in so many places that I don't really feel like I need to go over this too much. But I'm just going to point out uh, a couple of the great graphics, uh, the, uh, the original cover art. I'm sure that's in that Dark Horse. Um, you know, I'm trying to remember what, what cover they used for the... Uh, I mean, what... Yeah, what cover they used for the cover um, for that book. Like I said, it's going to... Uh, sometime in uh, mid-2024, it's going to be reissued as a paperback. Uh, here's, a, here's a whole... Um, uh, now you, you go from having a full page to having them re reproduce smaller than usual. The thing I like about this, this really shows off how well done these EC comics were because some comics of the time, and, and I'm not saying this is a fault for those for other publishers. Some of these com some comics just don't work to be reproduced in black and white. They knew there was going to be color carrying part of the image and so it's not the blacks aren't done as well as they are on here um but you know a lot of artists um were were thoughtful enough they said they did the the blacks and they did have the blacks carry the page and i think that's really important that's part of what makes the ec one so cool is because the darkness that the horror comics and the crime comics needed is built right in there. And it doesn't get messed up by the poor coloring that some of them... It was like, um, I first became aware of EC Comics in, in um, 
I, I'm a little, I was a kid in the 60s. So I missed that first wave of EC Comics. And I was lived out in the country. I, and I wasn't seeing them anywhere. I don't know, you know. And I mean, it was pretty rural. It, it's a suburb now where I used, where I grew up. But at the time, it was very rural, mostly farms and stuff. Um, and there just wasn't a place I didn't find. You know, I didn't have a lot of neighbors. I didn't know anybody who had old comics. And um, so I didn't see these ECs until the Digests came out. And uh, that's where I saw Mad first, the, the early comic Mad, the, you know, the comic book Mad. And that's where I first saw the EC stuff. And those, um, those were... Uh, uh, really cool and they, they the, the thing is they work because of this the way they drew these original pages and the way they spotted their blacks and stuff anyway I'm talking too much about that this is this is a big book to get through um, I just like I just wanted to highlight this <laughs> this page um, more behind the scenes stuff just wonderful amounts of stuff uh, just another highlighting some more artwork um, the uh, evolution of the uh, hosts. So you get, uh, generally they're getting more gruesome as they go along. <laughs> There's some makeup work done for them. See how the image is off? <laughs> That's funny. Uh, More Graham Ingalls original art. Ugh, the way he drew regular people was pretty gruesome too. He was good at that. Nice cover. Uh, for some reason, uh, now this is if you are familiar with the Toshin books on Marvel Comics, the Spider-Man, uh, Fantastic Four, Avengers. They've printed a couple in this giant format. And this is the size of the pages here. Why they picked this particular um, comic to do the full size treatment on the pages, I don't know. It's Feldstein, I like it. I don't think it's an exceptional one. I don't think the surprise ending is especially shocking or anything, but look, that's really cool. The, the great thing about Having the ECs this size is, when you see a regular size, man, there are some of the comics where the there is so much writing, some of which, quite frankly, is could have probably been trimmed. Um, there's so much writing on the page that sometimes it's not, it doesn't feel appealing to want to read it. I mean, it, that's my one complaint I would have uh, for the ECs is the amount of dialogue. And it's not... It's not just me that feels that way. There are other people too. Um, but uh, but seeing it this large, really you get a chance to look at that artwork. And, and that's actually um, part of the thing about these, uh, these black and white uh, reprints. I don't have most of this series. Um, I just have a couple. I didn't really have the money to uh, spend on getting the whole series, which is huge and which would be great. But I found a couple really cheap of the later editions. And uh, again, the size of the page makes it not feel so bad that they have so much dialogue and captions and stuff. Um, but nice, very nice to have that. Um, this is uh, uh, Kurtzman doing layouts for other artists. So Kurtzman was very exacting about how exactly to do uh, these layouts and stuff. And I don't know. I don't, I don't think most artists would like to have layouts this exact. Um, I, I think probably sometimes they, they appreciated it. It probably made the work less hard. Um, but wow. And, you know, some of the, some of the work, like, I, I think... I think this would have worked better if Kirchman had just done it himself with his more minimalistic style. But uh, I, don't, I don't know. It's uh, easy to be an armchair critic. Uh, nice cover there. One of Kirchman's most 
famous comics and they they do sh do the original artwork there. Showing off some covers. You know, Kurtzman's bear style makes for pretty stunning covers. Another Kurtzman comic, original pages. Uh, some Wally Wood. Um, he was a huge Hal Foster, Prince Valiant fan. And, uh, you know, he got to show it off sometimes. Um, a lot of times Wood has, um, you know, he's not, he, he doesn't do a lot of these panel things. Um, you know, the flow, have comics that have flow of the action. A lot of times he looks more like an illustrator. And that's probably because um, that's how the newspaper comics that he was a fan of were, you know, the Flash Gordons and the, Prince Valiant and stuff like that, um, but he, but you know, he was capable of uh, doing some stuff. That's very, uh, very reminiscent of some of the Kirby stuff that would come. And of course, I'm I'm not mentioning, I'm not pointing out a lot of the Severin stuff. This is one covered by Severin and, and Will Elder. Um, Severin is uh, is a lot of fun to see his stuff. This um, this comic uh, they they uh, wanted to show off Johnny Craig and how well he handles the rain effect in this. That's why they're publishing this. But EC sometimes they did a lot with the lettering. The lettering is really great in it. But sometimes I think they go a little too far. I think this does really well with the lettering. I think this is a really well done one, and, and um, I really like that. As for the rain effect, I yeah, I do think it's good. Um, Here's some more uh, of these iconic covers. And this is... Uh, I thought I'd point out this one because um, this Johnny Craig uh, cover is probably... has the least amount of lines on it. I mean, look at how bare minimum all this stuff is done. Um, really, uh, really sticks out for that reason. I, I'm... I wonder how it stuck out on the stands when you saw it amongst all the other comics. I thought I'd show a little little page of some of the Frazetta. You know, he did, uh, of course, a couple comics for uh, for EC. Nice cover there. Um, and uh, this, uh, what is the, this guy? This is talking about EC Quickie. And this is something I had noticed, and I guess I just don't have any of the the places where this was done. They talk about how um, uh, Sid Check was an artist who worked for them. Uh, he didn't get a lot of work for them because they thought he was too uh, similar to some of their other artists they, they were giving more work to. But there was a... Um, the idea was they would have a story... And it would have one outcome, but then they would do this EC quickies where they would kind of re, in a shorter form, show the, the same story again, but then with a different ending, a different payoff. Um, they don't have the whole stories here, so I don't really know how that compares. Um, uh, I might, uh, I don't know where I'd check that out at this point. Um, says there's a crime suspense story and two in weird fantasy. So I guess if I look up through the weird fantasy, I bet they're later issues because I only have the earliest ones. But maybe as Dark Horse reprints them, I'll, I'll be able to check those out. Okay. Famous cover there. Looks so good, full size like that. Here's the chapter on Mad and Panic. More great Kurtzman, minimal style. Gosh, he was, I love that stuff. Uh, you know, there are have been a million reconstructions of uh, superheroes. But this is the first one I really read. You know, I had read some superhero parodies in some places, but 
This was the most cutting at the time. This was the mid '60s. I read it in the one of the little Mad uh, comics. I don't know if it was the Mad Reader. I had a bunch of them. Uh, there were like I don't know four of them at least of the early ones covering the early stuff. I don't know. My mind's too too old, too shot. But uh, yeah, Super Duper Man, great. Uh, Great parody, great look at the at the superhero genre. There's an original the Panic. Just thought I'd point out some uh, Mads. There's a uh, his original color tests. The original covers. I love it. I love these little characters here. And here, of course, I couldn't, I can't, I love Basil so much. Oh, gosh, I wish he had done more for Mad. Uh, which twin has the phony? <laughs> Let's see here. I just love Basil. Love Basil. I wish he had more stuff. Um, really, the stuff I love best, my absolute favorite Basil, though, are his horror comics. He only did a couple of them, but man, I love those comics. They're, they're some of my favorite horror comics of all time. It's so great. More great parody stuff. I go past the Robin Hood. Oh, yeah, there's a past the Robin Hood and Plastic Sam. You know, this stuff, these parodies were just so great because... They, they bothered to do, you know, have such great artists doing the work. I mean, that's what made them, that's what made them more than just a, a parody that you looked at once and felt like you had. More great Severn, Kurtzman, Wally Wood doing a Prince Valiant and, and Flash Gordon. All kinds of great stuff. Archie. Uh, a bunch of ads. Here he is. Fun cover there. I'm just showing off some of the covers now. All this behind the scenes stuff is just so good too. And so much of it. The Witch's Cauldron. Um... And now here we got something. This is another thing I've never seen him in person. Um, 132 spine-tingling pages. These annuals, um, they would take four issues of the comics that they had uh, um, quantity of in their warehouse. They would take those covers off and wrap them up in, in one new cover so that uh, you, know, four, you would get four issues um, for 25 cents instead of a dime. And uh, that's how they would move unsold back issues. I've never seen one of those in person. Um, I, I wouldn't mind seeing how it's bound and how it looked, but, uh, you know. There's a uh, Wally Wood, you know, obviously more adult than they could have printed at the time, but something he did for gains. There's a lot of artwork in here. You see artists who later revisited their own covers or other people's covers and did commissions for people. There's a lot of that in here. So that, that's really cool. More great Wally Wood. He drew great monsters. That's part of why I love him. Um, to be honest with you, I'm more familiar with the uh, <laughs> with the gory cover than, than the censored cover that got out there. Because uh, this, you know, people used to love to show off this thing. The fact that this still existed. Um, here, of course, is Seduction of the Innocents. They talk about everything that happened. And, you know, I'm not going to go into that. There is so, there's a lot of stuff here. Gives you a good idea uh, about what uh, happened. Um, but, you know, there's, there's like easily over a dozen YouTube videos just on this subject. There's books on the subject. There's tons of articles. So, 
you know, uh, you're probably familiar with this already. But anyway, it's, it talks about the downfall of the comics industry and especially EC. Um, I thought I'd point out piracy. This is one of the things that they did after the code. Um, and uh, not very, none of those uh, books were very successful. Uh, but this is one... In Alan Moore's The Watchman, a kid is reading throughout the story uh, a, a comic about piracy because in this alternate timeline that that is uh, that is The Watchman, um, these <laughs> the the piracy books by EC took off and that became the next big phase instead of superheroes, and uh, <laughs> not not bloody likely, but there you go. Um, and I thought I'd point this out. Uh, the uh, Shock Illustrated, the this magazine format thing, Picto Fiction. They were they were illustrated um, stories, uh, they but they weren't comics. But this is just some great art, very much like the paperbacks of the time, which is what they were trying to get into. Then there's an enormous amount of stuff about EC fandom. EC fandom, of course. Um, one of the most rabid fandoms of all. And uh, I think I'll point out to you right here, I have this magazine I just got from, uh, this is, was, is being published by Fantagraphics, uh, one a year, the EC Fan Addict Fanzine. It's through their um, Fantagra Fantagraphics Underground. So it is not being sold in comic shops or or stores or anything, you have to order it through their website. Very small press run. This is the only issue I got. Um, I don't know that I need <laughs> to have this, but um, it's a lot of fun. It, but it really goes into some minutia. And again, it has a lot of that stuff that EC artists did for places other than EC. And, uh, you know, if you're really interested in EC fandom... You can take a look at that, but there have been a lot, uh, and some of the some of the um, fanzines for EC have been really influential on, in their own right. Uh, again, this is considered one of the EC comics. You know, some people will call it like the best comic of all time, kind of thing. Um, the Master Race, um, and they reprint it here. Beautiful. And here's a, a Frazetta. This was actually done for some uh, Flash Gordon, I think. Uh, I forget what it was now. Darn it. I can't remember. <laughs> um, Frazetta. Oh, it was done for Buck Rogers. So this was done for a Buck... Is that a Buck Rogers helmet, though? I don't even know what that's for. But anyway, uh, Frazetta had done this, uh, but it wasn't used for the original project. So uh, Bill Gaines had him reconfigure it to use on the cover of one of his. But that's the original. Then it... Then, ooh, there's one of the Mads... Uh, And that's 35 cents. Mm. Those were the days. And that's about what a paperback was. So there it goes, goes in onto Mad Magazine. Here's, uh, these are mass market versions of the Tales from the Crypt. And uh, that's where I first saw these two was in the mass markets. Um, this is some of the uh, EC Liz, some of the... Um, Here's a book about uh, horror comics of the 50s. Um, all this EC stuff. Uh, this is that, this is that um, series here. And you can see just about everything. I, I thought, I don't see here, I thought, I thought the Westerns had, had gotten a volume of reprints too. But I don't see that here. So I don't, I'm not really sure if it happened or not. But, you know, that's the one thing I haven't really seen much of. 
as far as the EC stuff goes. Here's more of these artists re revisiting stuff. Um, this is Johnny Craig. He did a lot of these. And you can see they don't quite look the same as, you know, the, the, the cover work. You know, he's, he's got a different style here. These are just paintings and stuff. Um, but they're great. <laughs> I'd love to own one. <laughs> there they are torturing Alfred E. Newman, the characters. Now, here we go. This is, um, this is the entirety. Of, this is the cover gallery. Um, and this is the part that I find. And, and I understand limitations of space. I get it. But boy... I really am sad that so many of them are done this size. I'm not going to go through a ton of these, but, but you know, uh, I love this. I love these. Some of these are so... There's that one that I uh, thought was so cool in the black and white. There you can see it in color, but, boy, it's so small. Um, there's some full-page stuff. Looks great. I, I like this size too. Here, I've, I've mentioned, you know, if if every layout was done like this, you know, this is big enough. It's not as big as I would like, but it's big enough. Um, I just, um, I just feel like these are too, a little too small. And, you know, some of these, some of these that are printed small, like that is printed in a larger size inside the book but most of these aren't um and uh i'd like to see them i'd like to have them all in one place you know i'd like to see these all uh you know in an easily flip through kind of um format so that's my one caveat is that the right is that the right term um about this book is the cover gallery, which is a big, uh, a big selling point. Apparently, uh, they put it on the cover. Um, that uh, that they um, it it just doesn't look as good. You know what I like is you know Toshin does another. There's another size book that Toshin does. Do I have it around handy? Now I guess I don't. Darn it. You know, the whole book doesn't need to be this size. I would take a book that was just the covers that were just slightly larger than the originals. And if it was just the covers. So if someone could do that, I'd buy that. In the meantime, like I said, Dark Horse is going to have that uh, um, Artisan or whatever they're calling it, edition of, uh, you know, the original artwork for the best of EC covers. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I'll talk to you again sometime soon. Like, subscribe, etc.